Buongiorno a tutti, grazie per essere intervenuti. Good morning, good afternoon. IB2Eyes uh, decided to organize uh, this face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, the Otto Club with me, Doe. Face-to-face with Andrea Fragoli, president of uh, Federotica. The previous uh, uh, event uh, concerning the uh, European Diplo Diploma with the president of ECO, Paul Fokelson, uh, and uh, Sergio Cappa. Well, this previous event uh, and face-to-face uh, -face will be then uh, broadcast uh, to uh, the, uh, on the platform. So thank you very much, Mr. Afragoli. In this uh, uh, 20 minutes interview, we're going to focus on the profession in Italy, and in particular, the uh, relationship with uh, eye doctors, uh, the commonalities and the differences between these two jobs. Uh, I would like to start uh, with this uh, uh, very last issue. We talk a lot about uh, interdisciplinarity, especially in uh, Italy. Uh, is this really the case or uh, is it still a long way to go uh, before we uh, reach a, a good interdisciplinary approach? Well, first of all, good afternoon to everybody. Well, I think uh, we will uh, discover uh, between 6 and 7 p.m. Uh, what, we, uh, what our future uh, is going to look like and how our future is going to look like. Yes, there will be another face-to-face -face with Matteo Piovella, the president of the Italian Ophthalmologic Society. Go. What we have uh, tried to achieve in these uh, past years is to uh, liaise and to establish a partnership and a dialogue with uh, eye doctors and uh, whenever possible we also tried uh, to um, structure uh, this dialogue. To be honest, uh, we sent uh, to SOI uh, communication to the uh, attention uh, uh, of the board, and this happened uh, uh, some months after my election, so it was two years ago, and uh, we are still waiting for an answer. So this is one first fact. We, uh, with this communication, with this letter, we just wanted to uh, start a relationship. We did not uh, define any uh, concrete. Uh, steps for collaboration. During the past uh, years, uh, however, we have started uh, to uh, collaborate with a uh, uh, sub-association of SOI. So we are invited uh, to uh, the congresses, we invite them uh, to attend our conferences. Uh, and we can say that uh, there is a vivid uh, discussion and a good relationship between each other. This doesn't mean that uh, we have solved all the problems. This simply me see means that uh, we uh, discuss about issues and problems. Uh, sometimes we share the same opinions, uh, uh, sometimes we don't, uh, but we are actually in dialogue with each other. Last year during our uh, conference in Florence I still remember uh, Giuseppe Siccoli and uh, uh, myself uh, we wanted to uh, describe uh, the uh, possibility of accreditation within uh, the Italian NHS so well this was uh, just an option this was just a, a proposal and back then uh, we were a bit skeptical because uh, uh, presenting such a thing uh, in front of a eye doctor audience uh, could have been uh, uh, critical but uh, many doctors were present and they were actually uh, reacted positively to this proposal. Again, we still have to define roles, and responsibilities and parameters, but whenever there is a re relationship, we are open to a dialogue, but if you do not answer to our letters, uh, 
uh, we can hardly start a relationship. And what about the situation on the field? Well, this is a completely different story. Of course, uh, there are uh, trust relationships between uh, and among professionals, so this is a completely different story. I don't know if Gianni Lodi is here. Yes, he's sitting here. Well, Gianni Lodi is the best uh, example for a good uh, relationship in Italy between opticians and eye doctors. Uh, he was certainly good at that. Uh, he certainly found uh, a good uh, uh, partner, a good eye doctor. He was uh, um, open-minded uh, enough to realize that uh, dialogue and uh, interdisciplinarity uh, are beneficial for both uh, professions. And uh, uh, whenever I visit him, I always have uh, uh, very good impressions because uh, this is uh, the practical example of what we are uh, striving to achieve. We have many other uh, such positive examples. Uh, uh, every year there is a, a one-day conference uh, organized with the uh, ophthalmological clinic. There are many situations that actually uh, put uh, into practice what we have been uh, telling for a long time. We simply would like to extend uh, these examples uh, throughout the Italian uh, territory. Apart from uh, uh, conferences, uh, symposia, workshops, uh, what about the implications uh, for your daily practice, uh, both uh, uh, regarding you and eye doctors? What are the commonalities uh, and what are, in your opinion, uh, uh, the differences or the conflicts between uh, the two professions uh, that still have to be overcome? Let me point out uh, uh, two aspects. Well, obviously, some uh, specific competences of our profession that uh, are also uh, performed by the eye doctor, so going beyond uh, his uh, competences as a doctor, create a, a good win-win situation if there is a good relationship. So ju just to take a personal example, a week ago I received a phone call from an eye doctor. He told me about uh, the problems of uh, one of his patients. Uh, he was referring the patient uh, to me so that I could solve uh, these problems uh, on his behalf. And uh, uh, well, this is the way we work whenever there is a good relationship between the two uh, professions. Uh, also in the field of contact lenses, for instance, uh, there are many situations where our uh, intervention is really key and can really uh, provide a step forward and fill a gap. Conversely, uh, well, last uh, summer, last uh, July, we conducted a small survey, a piece of research involving 100 uh, uh, optic centers for one month. But, well, from a statistical viewpoint, uh, this survey was not uh, relevant, but it was very interesting from a practical viewpoint. We asked uh, 100 uh, colleagues of ours to uh, monitor the referrals uh, uh, of their patients to an eye doctor and uh, to identify the reasons for these referrals. Well, this was a, a great survey. Well, if these uh, spontaneous referrals uh, can be properly structured and defined, uh, that is, uh, if we were able to define a protocol, let's say, that has nothing to do with eye diagnostics, uh, let's say a minimum protocol that is applied whenever a patient uh, uh, undergoes uh, a refraction uh, uh, at an optician and whenever uh, problems have to be identified by an eye doctor and uh, so whenever a referral is necessary, this could really lead to extraordinary results.
but uh, Federotica has a very bad uh, uh, opinion about uh, uh, chains. We know that Asoy has a strong relationships with a couple of chains uh, uh, which are now in Salmoragi and Vigano. And I know that uh, Federotica, well, maybe not at a national level, but also at regional levels, uh, well, that Federotica uh, took some measures uh, against uh, these chains. Don't you think that uh, this attitude against uh, the chains uh, in and uh, by uh, uh, highlighting the differences between chains and uh, uh, independent opticians uh, can be uh, an, uh, can have negative repercussions. It was in Rome, yes. I come from Bologna. In uh, Bologna, there is uh, uh, one change which is uh, highly represented, which is, however, not uh, very much present uh, throughout Italy. Well, I'm joking. Of course, the uh, and I'm talking about uh, I'm, and I'm talking as a professional, not as a president of Federotica. The relationship with the chains is a daily relationship that is part of the uh, daily practice of uh, each of us. So we have to uh, benchmark against uh, your colleagues, against uh, your friends, and the same applies to chains as well. So as far as I'm uh, concerned, I don't think we have to uh, blame chains uh, for anything. Uh, well, chains are uh, well established in uh, Italy. We have to cope with them on a daily basis. Personally speaking, I don't see, well, I hope I uh, will not be misunderstood. Well, uh, each uh, person uh, decides how to organize oneself and how to structure oneself. Uh, there are colleagues of mine who made certain decisions, they're very good at certain sectors, less good at other activities. Uh, in other words, each, has, each one of us has his or her own um, virtues and values, but we all um, perform the same jobs with different competences and with different virtues. But I'm not saying that uh, I'm better than others or that others are better than uh, uh, than me. Well, of course, a Federotica represents independent opticians, uh, uh, be they members of uh, groups or, or fully independent, but uh, for sure, Federotica represents uh, independent opticians, uh, independent retail opticians, but uh, I don't have any problem uh, with others. Okay, let's talk about uh, ready-made glasses. And uh, a few days ago, a report was uh, broadcast on TV. There was a, a, an eye doctor from Rome criticizing the use of uh, uh, ready-made glasses, except when bought at uh, specialized centers. And uh, this report on TV showed a pharmacy as a specialist center. Uh, there was also a bill that was uh, uh, submitted to the Italian Parliament about uh, the possibility of offering ready-made glasses uh, at opticians only, uh, whereas uh, nowadays uh, there is a kind of uh, wild distribution of uh, ready-made glasses. I would like to know uh, about uh, your stance as Federotica vis-à-vis ready-made uh, glasses and whether uh, ready-made glasses uh, can be uh, uh, a topic uh, uh, where to join forces between eye doctors and opticians. Uh, well, pre-assembled glasses, ready-made uh, glasses is a very delicate issue uh, uh, and we're very sensitive in that, so we have to be very clear in this issue as well. In our opinion, if pre-assembled glasses, ready-made uh, glasses, uh, 
could, uh, as prescribed uh, by legislation in 1988, so if pre-assembled glasses could be sold in, uh, uh, at opticians, uh, sanitary stores and pharmacies, uh, this could be, in my opinion, this could be welcomed as a great success. However, well, Italy is a country full with contradictions uh, and, uh, um, and an interpretation given by the Ministry of Health is uh, uh, much more valuable than uh, legislation itself. And uh, uh, this is a contradiction that we actually pointed out. Uh, lawyer uh, Ale is not present here today, but we have been uh, fighting against that for many years. And uh, as I said, pre-assembled uh, glasses and ready-made glasses are a hot topic still. I think we should uh, go back to what the legislation prescribed. Uh, uh, the situation as it is today is not a positive one for us. We would like to go back to 15 years earlier, but I would like to take a different approach on that. I mean, I don't think uh, uh, we have to uh, reject uh, pre-assembled glasses uh, um, themselves. I think we should reject the way uh, pre-assembled glasses are used, but not the product in itself. If you travel the world uh, for business reasons uh, or for vacation purposes, Paul Folkerson comes from Sweden, for instance, uh, I think you can find uh, ready-made glasses uh, at every airport in the world. So, I don't think, uh, well, this would be this would be great, actually, but you can hardly imagine that Italy is so virtuous that uh, uh, it can uh, reject uh, a kind of uh, a habit that has been established uh, throughout the world. I think uh, uh, what is happening is uh, wrong. That is the idea that ready-made glasses can perform a function which is not actually the function of ready-made glasses. That is, we think that uh, ready-made glasses uh, can perform a corrective action, a corrective function, uh, like spectacles, for instance. Pre-assembled uh, glasses uh, are uh, a device that, uh, having the same power in both lenses and having uh, a fixed center, and uh, due to the technical and technological features of uh, uh, this device, they cannot be used uh, to replace spectacles. We are at Mido, uh, which is uh, uh, really the cradle of uh, uh, international highway. Uh, we have been talking at a European level for 15 years about the nickel content in metal frames. There are commissions at a European level that, has been, that have been discussing for the past 20 years about the impact of nickel for a spectacle wearer. And the discussion is still underway. If you read the uh, standardized uh, the, um, the European regulation concerning pre-assembled uh, uh, specifications, uh, pre-assembled glasses specifications, well, nothing is mentioned about the nickel release. So uh, pre-assembled uh, glasses do not have to comply with any specifications as far as uh, uh, harmful nickel release is concerned. So we don't know whether these frames can have a negative impact on the wearer. So if the idea behind this product is simply to keep one pair of glasses in uh, the uh, cockpit of your car and one pair of glasses on uh, the uh, night table when you read a book before going to bed, well, this is the real function of ready-made glasses. Conversely, if you 
think of using these pair of glasses uh, uh, eight hours a day in front of your PC or uh, at home, well, this is, my opinion, a wrong use of pre-assembled glasses. And this can also cause uh, uh, problems, hopefully not, but uh, this uh, can potentially harm the wearer. Are eye doctors uh, supporting you in this respect or are they moving to the opposite direction? Can they help you in fighting against uh, this trend? As we are talking about uh, bed Italian habit and uh, as uh, well, such things uh, uh, emerge uh, as we uh, think uh, as we uh, tend to be smart, so we want to uh, spend less, so 20 euros instead of 150, but it's also true that uh, certain things emerge because there are trends. In fact, if we were able to create a kind of a gentleman agreement or a cartel so that we together, so we as eye doctors and as opticians, uh, uh, try and define the specific roles for the specific products, uh, this would be a very good sign of collaboration and this would be extremely appreciated by us. We still have a couple of minutes. Uh, you mentioned Mr. Fulkerson and uh, you uh, uh, followed uh, uh, Fulkerson's speech uh, about uh, ECO and the European Diploma very carefully. Uh, is there anything interesting or anything new vis-à-vis -vis, uh, Federotica's uh, stance towards education uh, and the degree Federotica wanted to uh, introduce a degree in uh, uh, optics and optometry, uh, even if it is not recognized, but this is a high-quality education. Is there anything new based on uh, what Mr. Folkerson said about the European diploma? Uh, from my personal experience, uh, uh, I knew what was said because I experienced it uh, as an Italian representative inside uh, ECO. Uh, what we put into question about uh, the European uh, diploma, and it came to surface uh, during the previous debate, uh, and a uh, big, uh, uh, major economic investment uh, was made, uh, and uh, however, the number of diploma holders was so small. There was no virtuous relationship between uh, uh, the efforts made uh, by uh, the structure and the result. On the other hand, the idea that uh, university and university students uh, may be accredited for the European diploma uh, and uh, in their specific academic training, yes, it's right. It's the right direction to take. Uh, this uh, has to do with the world of universities. It's not my task uh, to go into details of it. Uh, hey, the European Diploma in 2016 uh, has its own uh, uh, sense. Uh, it has got it uh, in this context, and so it's welcome, yes, for sure. We are through at this point. Uh, if somebody has a burning, real burning question to ask, uh, just be brief. Andrea Garagnani. Senza microfono. Uh, the speaker doesn't use the mic, and so it's impossible for the interpreters uh, to translate. La terza campana, no? Eh... Orthoptists. It seems uh, somebody asked a question about uh, orthoptists. Somebody read something on in uh, Ottica Italiana. In the last uh, two and a half years, uh, I tried uh, uh, to establish uh, a relationship, an honest relationship with whomever I met. 
colleagues, uh, non-colleagues, uh, and uh, representatives uh, of the ophthalmic uh, industry. And I did it because I thought that inside we had to heal a, a, an old wound uh, uh, which has a negative repercussion on us. And uh, I thought uh, uh, we might do the same thing also in the case of other categories. I, physicians, uh, it's not easy. We're trying to do something. Then perhaps at 7 p.m. I discover that tomorrow, no, I'm exaggerating, never say never. With the uh, orthoptists, uh, I thought about possible cooperation uh, and uh, something uh, for the context uh, we are in. And uh, orthoptists, uh, together with us, and eye physicians might be part uh, of a team uh, performing uh, visual screenings in so many Italian cities. We went to in the past few years, but, but I also like the idea to think in terms about uh, uh, positive exploitation of everybody's uh, skills uh, uh, to provide a service uh, to the population. And at the end, it's what we all should do. What do I mean to say? And uh, orthoptists uh, may not like this, uh, but uh, if you remove orthoptists uh, from hospitals, that is to say, freelance proce profession, uh, who knows uh, uh, something about orthoptists? Uh, who knows who they are? Let's ask this question. If you want to cooperate, no problem. We simply need to speak about it and uh, define uh, the various uh, competencies, the uh, skills, uh, and uh, we can structure a relationship. Uh, we, Italian optical centers, whether you like it or not, we've become the first uh, terminal uh, of uh, visual problems of uh, citizens. When a subject uh, has uh, visual problems, uh, they almost always come to us uh, for a piece of advice. Uh, to try and understand. So you have an even bigger responsibility. Yes, it's a responsibility. But what I want to say is that it should be exploited by everybody. Everybody. So the result, and here we have uh, Bruno Maestrelli, and he was witness uh, to it. Uh, a dissemination project uh, and uh, we go to schools uh, to speak about vision, visual problems uh, in schools. And uh, so uh, reference uh, professionals uh, uh, may be interested uh, and uh, uh, I physicians and uh, orthoptists uh, uh, are interested who says the contrary and when we tried to carry out uh, that uh, project and activity they were against us if that's the approach perhaps there's something to uh, review in terms of human relationships likewise if from tomorrow something changes we're fully available and we are so available that when you realize uh, that so many orthoptics, uh, young orthoptists, may never find uh, a job in public health facilities, uh, and uh, they often go to our optical centers uh, to find a job with such persons, we might establish a dialogue, not at the moment, but we might establish a dialogue uh, to provide them with opportunities uh, not to work as an optician, which is not their job, but uh, to do what they are able to do, that is to say, to work as orthoptists, uh, 
also, and why not in our optical centers? That's cooperation. That's the right way to approach things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now the time is over. And uh, they tell me we can't go on. We have to stick to the time schedule for the following presentation. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to the president.